Hi everybody. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a insect mandala in the style of Damien Hirst using Photopea. Okay, so to create an image like this, we're going to need five images of insects. Let's get started. Go ahead, collect your five images, save them on your device, and we're going to create a new file. So we're going to open up Photopea and go new. You're going to set your DPI to 100 first. So go ahead and change the DPI first. All right, make sure there's the point after it. And you're going to change the height to 1000 and the width to 1000 as well. All right, so it's going to be 1000, 1000, 100 DPI. Create. Once you have your, your artboard opened up, you can go ahead and import all of your insect files. So I'm actually going to copy mine from another document. So you could easily just, as long as you have both or more projects open on the tabs up here, you can highlight your files, click and drag, and they should show up there. Now I have four. To import a photograph in Photopea, you go File open in place because we're opening it from your device and replacing it on your artboard. And there we go. So now we have our five images. And whenever you import an image that you find on the internet, you might notice that it is a, a smart object. So you see these little squares in the bottom right, just two finger click or right click that file and rasterize it. Okay, so we have our five images. Um, I'm actually only going to work with two to begin with. So I'm gonna hide three of them because we're gonna have to do this in two different layers. So because I have three beetles and two butterflies, let's start off with the butterfly images. Now we're gonna need to delete that white background. To do that with a colored image, you're probably going to want to try the magic wand tool over here. This really works best when the background is a solid color, right? It's like, like a solid white. If you have a multicolored image uh, with grass and trees in the background, this tool is probably not going to be your best bet. You might end up needing to use the lasso tool or the quick selection tool. But for a white background, we're just gonna click on that, select the white, Press backspace delete, excellent. And then press command D or control D to undo your selection. And then I'm gonna do the same to my second butterfly. Delete. Now you will notice the selection for this one left some remnants. Okay, there's some artifacts there that we need to delete. So I'm gonna deselect and now I'm actually going to clean that up by going to my selection tool my uh, quick selection tool which is the brush with the blob okay. click on your main subject matter which is the butterfly and notice those little remnants on the edges are not selected now if I want to delete those remnants if I press delete now uh-oh, we just deleted our main subject. So I'm going to undo, press Control or Command Z. We need to take the selection, the marching ants, and we need to turn them inside out. We need to inverse them. We're going to go to Select, Inverse, Delete. And that should delete everything outside. All right, and then I'm going to press Control or Command D to deselect. That butterfly. So now I should have two butterflies. They are looking good. I don't see any white remnants on any of them. Let's move on to the beetles. Magic wand. Delete. Commander control D. This one definitely does have some white artifacts on the edges. So again, I'm going to go back to my quick selection tool, select the main subject, perfect. Go to select, inverse, delete. 
control command D to deselect. So I'm going to do the other two and I'll be right back. Okay, so I have just deleted all my white backgrounds. I'm going to make my one group of insects invisible. I'm just going to unclick these little visible icons next to their layers. And I'm going to paint the background a nice neutral color. And this is just so that I can help uh, I can help see if there's any more white remnants showing through. Eventually, I'm going to change that background. So I'm going to use my paint bucket tool, which is right over here. For whatever reason, it is hidden behind the gradient tool. I don't know why. So this one, I can now see that there's definitely some halo remnants on this one. So I'm going to use my quick selection tool, click on the subject matter. Invert the selection, delete, control D, and that looks a lot better. Okay, that two-step process is going to give you better results. Okay, to create our mandalas, obviously these butterflies need to be shrunken down a bit. Go to your move tool. Make sure transform controls is on, otherwise this binding box and the anchor points will not show up. Okay, grab a corner. Hold down your shift key to make sure it doesn't scale out of proportion. And now I'm going to do the same to my other one. So shift and drag. And let's move them towards the top of the page. Okay, so to start lining up your insects, we need to see the guidelines and we need to be able to see where all of our numbers are. So. To do that, we go to View right up here. Then we go View, Show, Guides. Make sure that is on, right? So we have View, Show, Guides, and then also click on Rulers. You need both the rulers and the show guides on for this next step. So again, View, Rulers, check show guides check perfect so basically now you will see these numbers um, on the top it should be a thousand pixels yes it is and it should be a thousand pixels we're going to take your cursor we're going to go up to the numbers and you're just going to click on any area on the ruler and we're going to click down and what will happen is it allows you to bring down a temporary guideline and we're going to take it to the 500 pixel mark now this is not part of the final image. If you were to save this as a PNG, this guideline would disappear. It's just going to help us line up our images. And then we're gonna drag one from the left as well. Make sure it, line, it goes exactly to the 500 pixel mark. You're going to snap the insect all the way to the top. It should snap to the edge of the image, okay? And you should be able to see these little red guidelines. So that will help us uh, line up our images in the middle. Okay, then we're gonna do the same thing to the second one. I'm actually going to shrink it down a little bit. Because we're creating a a radial pattern, the images on the extremities on the outside need to be a little bit bigger than the ones closer to the center. So that's why I'm creating almost this cone effect, right? Where the images get smaller as you go towards the center point. What happens if your image is not uh, in a binding box that is perfectly centered, then you do need to visually just eyeball it to make sure that that center of the abdomen is right on that guideline. Okay, we're gonna say okay. Perfect. Now we're gonna take our two butterfly layers, which are right here, right click it or two finger click, and we're going to merge it down. Not flatten image, that will completely get rid of all my other layers. We're gonna merge down. And then we will see these now are acting as one layer. So now we're gonna take this layer, and we're gonna duplicate it. So we're gonna right click, duplicate. Um, one's right on top of the other, which is why we can't see it. 
but we're going to flip it down in a reverse mirror fashion. Click on your copy, go to edit, transform, flip vertically. And then we're going to grab it using the move tool and we're going to slide it all the way down until it snaps to the very bottom of your artboard. Just make sure it is aligned, not off center, right? They should be using those red guidelines. So now we have these two. And now we're going to merge these two layers together so that they act as one. So I'm going to go to the top one. I'm going to merge down. And now these are one layer. Then we're going to duplicate this again. So we're going to right click or two finger click. Duplicate. And this time we're going to rotate them so that they fit over this X axis line right here. Now to do that, just make sure your move tool is on, transform controls is on, and you'll notice your cursor, if you get close to that binding box, will turn into like a arrow with, with like an elbow bent in it. That means we can then click and drag. So I'm gonna click and rotate. But okay, how do we get it to line up perfectly? Do we just eyeball it? Photo P has this shortcut called shift, which allows you to snap at 15 degree intervals. And then let go and let go of shift. And then we say, okay, we have to confirm up here with a little check. So now we're gonna merge these two, duplicate, move tool, transform controls, rotate, to about 45 degrees. If your fingers can't quite get there, press down the shift key and it should snap right into place. Let go, confirm. And ladies and gentlemen, we are now done with our first set of animals. Now we're gonna repeat the exact same process with my three beetles. So we're gonna take these two butterflies, we're gonna merge them into one. Merge down. I'm going to actually turn off my butterflies because I don't want them to distract me. So I'm going to turn off their visibility. And I'm going to repeat the same process with these guys. Okay, so we're going to line them up. You just need to make sure that your topmost insect, again, the binding box edge definitely snaps to the top edge of your artboard. We're going to merge all three of these together. You could either just click on the top one and right click and merge down. But let's say you have a lot of layers that you need to merge down together quickly. Just click on the top layer, hold down shift, click on the last layer that you want to merge and it should select everything in between. So now we have three selected. We're going to right click or two finger click and we're going to merge our layers. And now we're going to duplicate. We're going to flip. So we're going to go edit, transform, flip vertically, go to your move tool, Slide it down. And merge these two together. Duplicate. Rotate with the shift key pressed. Confirm, merge down, duplicate. 45 degree angles. You will also notice, I'm saying 45 degree angles because there is a, an angle um, a parameter right here that you can check, All right? And you could actually type the actual value in yourself if that's easier for you. And then we say confirm. We're gonna merge these together. Let's turn on our butterflies back on and see what we have. 
excellent color. But you know what? We are hiding um, the beautiful butterflies. So I'm actually going to rotate this top layer manually. Now this will not work with the shift key because uh, this is less than, this is not on a 15 degree value. So you have to visually figure out what looks good. So you're just going to click and then let go and release when you're happy with it. Okay. Now I'm going to say, okay, confirm. And then decide, do you think it looks better with this layer on top? Or do you want to try switching the order of your layers? You can just click and drag your layers that way. I actually do like it with the beetles on top. We're going to then merge these two together. Right click, merge down. And at this point, I am going to change my background color white again. Because we're not quite done. All right. So you can actually get your guidelines out of the way. I actually am going to create a drop shadow effect underneath these insects. So it looks like they're almost floating above a piece of paper. So to do that, click on that layer, make sure that they are not flattened, right? Because we don't want any color around the insects yet. And we're gonna go all the way down to EFF or effects. And we're gonna click on drop shadow. Another way to get there, if you just double click on the little icon here, the same options will pop up. All right, so we're gonna go down to drop shadow. We're gonna turn them on. Make sure it is selected dark gray. Okay, that looks good to me. I'm gonna press okay. And at this point, ladies and gents, you are finished unless you want to add color on your background layer. Okay, I hope you guys found this helpful. Thanks so much.